Hello, I'm your cartoon critic, because you are never too old for cartoons. Well, it's the middle of January, and I figured I should kick things off with a movie that I really love, as opposed to one that I really hate. And I mean really, really hate. So, what helps define the movie that I really love? A good villain. I mean, don't get me wrong, a good hero is needed for a great storyline, but without a villain, there's no need for a hero. And who better to give us some great villains? Disney. Believe it or not, there was a time when Disney not only made traditionally animated movies, rather than the CG love affair they have with Pixar, but the movies were truly family movies, meaning that there was something for anyone in the family. Including that out-of-place one that spends her free time talking into a webcam. They were dark, they even had adult moments, and that's why we loved them. They weren't made just for kids. Unlike some other movies! That said, let's revisit one of my what has to be one of my all-time favorite Disney movies, The Hunchback of Notre Dame. I gotta say, I really love just the way this starts, with the use of the bells. I mean, just listen to it. Really, this movie had one of my favorite musical scores. It really sets the feel for the movie. So we open in Paris while our narrator sings us through. Morning in Paris, the city awakes to the bells of Notre Dame. The fisherman fishes, the baker man bakes. Bomber man bombs, the pack man packs. So this guy, who looks like he's supposed to be in a Mardi Gras parade, is telling the story using puppets for the kids. All by themselves. They don't know. Your lips moved. Shameful confession time. I used to have a crush on this character when I was a kid. That's not weird. Clopin sings us through the past as we see a group of gypsies trying to sneak through, one of them carrying a screaming baby. Probably the one and only time you'll ever see an infant stop crying because mommy asked it to. Unfortunately, they are overheard and arrested by this guy. Judge Claude Frollo because you can't have a movie in a French setting without at least one male character named Claude. Je m'appelle Claude. Je de coupe plow. <laughs> you there! What are you hiding? Stolen goods, no doubt. Oh, sure, it was crying like a baby earlier, and it smells like it needs its diaper change, but it must be stolen goods. Take them from her. She ran. So Frollo chases her through the streets, but eventually meets with no-name female number one and throws her down the steps. No. A monster. Gary Abuse? So clearly acting logically, Frollo goes to pollute their drinking water for good when... Stop! What the hell? I mean, did we really need that transition? Stop! I quit it! The priest pleads with Frollo to raise the child as we get this creepy medieval-style peer pressure from the statues. And Frollo gives in, saying that the child has to be raised in the bell tower, where no one can see him. And now we fast forward to however many years later, when Quasi is an adult. Wait a minute. If this is what he looks like, and this was his mother, then this couldn't be his father. Does that mean... Another one falls to the powers of French wine. Quasi lives alone in the bell tower, taking care of a bird apparently, but we find out he's not really alone. <coughs> oh, man. I thought he'd never leave. Recognize that voice? My name is George. I'm unemployed and I live with my parents. Yep, that's Jason Alexander. You're damn right it's me! So we learn Quasi gets through the days with Hugo, Victor, and Laverne as friends. But Quasi longs for freedom to be around others and watches them every day while his master forbids him from leaving. You are deformed. I am deformed. And you are ugly. And I am ugly. And these are crimes for which the world shows little pity. It's amazing he didn't kill himself with this being taught to him on a daily basis. A. Abomination. B. Blasphemy. C. C -c Contrition. D. Damnation. E. Eternal damnation. Though I am kind of curious what the F stood for. 
Also, I think this may have been what birthed the emo haircut. But even with Frollo's constant blows to his self-esteem, Quasi takes his chances and ventures out to join the festival. Meanwhile, we cut to another part of Paris where uh, Feeble Dolphus is trying to find the Palace of Justice, but no one helps. Me, gentlemen, I'm looking for the Palace of Justice. Would you? Hmm, I guess not. Blind. So after they share a moment. <gasps> it's a trap. But our heroine escapes and uh, feeble Phoebus. shows who he is and gets them to lead him to the palace. So Feeble Phoebus. finds out that Frollo has hired him to help eliminate the gypsies by finding their secret hideout. 